to the Keith B. Dixon Zone, dropping photography knowledge all day long, right? Right? Welcome back to another podcast. My name is Keith B. Dixon, the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. It's official. I have, uh, you know, I don't think there's a word that could describe this guest that I have on today. I'm going to say extraordinary, extraordinary photographer. Um, there, how many years, Ralph? 48 years. 48 years in the game. 48 years. Ralph Romaguerra, past president of PPA. And as far as merits go, on out of people, out of photographers in PPA, where do you fall in terms of achieving the most merits? Number six out of 30,000. Can you guys believe that? We're going we're gonna to be talking with Ralph Romaguerra. Ralph, tell us a little, tell our audience about you and... Um, how you started in photography? Well, that's a very funny story. Um, I started in photography actually in the Navy in 1967. I graduated from an all boys Catholic high school with a 3.8 average. I went out to LSUNO, uh, Louisiana State in New Orleans, and after a semester of finding out what fraternities, beer, and girls were about, uh, dropped down to a 2-3, uh, which was not really a big deal, but my best friend dropped to a point eight. Well, back in those days, if you didn't have a 2-0, you got drafted. You went directly to Vietnam, and he was six foot seven, size 15 shoe. And so he'd be a pretty big target, and we had done just about everything together. and. You know, I said, Bill, what you feel like doing? He goes, I don't know what you feel like doing. We're out having a brew or two. And, uh, and I said, well, let's join the Navy in the morning. He said, well, you're out of your mind. And um, he says, but if you're crazy enough to go, I'm going to go too. And next morning, he spent the night at my house. You know, my mama was used to that of, of you know, friends just popping in. And uh, we went and joined the Navy in the morning, and uh, they offered us airman ordnance, which was loading bombs. They offered us parachute rigging, and that sounded great because that was an air-conditioned office. Um, but you had to jump out the plane with the first one you packed. So we uh, said, what else you have to offer? Bill said, what else you have to offer to the recruiter? And the guy says, well, the only other thing is photography, but you didn't put that down as one of your uh, interests. And Bill said, wow, I didn't know you had photography. Ralph, tell him about the darkroom in, at your house. And I didn't know how to load an Instamatic. So off we went to uh, boot camp in Pensacola, Florida for what's called A school. And um, next six years was more or less reserve training and that kind of stuff and fell in love with photography and worked at the Tom's Picayune which was uh, New Orleans uh, week not weekly daily newspaper and uh, then opened up my own studio started with weddings and then from weddings um, did portraiture and then got into schools and that's really where we've made our money is in school photography. So you're native to New Orleans? I, I'm about as native as you can get. I was oh. born and raised mid-city New Orleans. This accent, Louisiana has three accents. We have the sweet little southern accent from Baton Rouge on up to Shreveport. Man, I got that. I told you about the people over to the west. I, I guarantee that their food, ooh la la, is some spicy and good. Uh, the Cajun people, but New Orleans people are called yats. Um, we say, where yat? We say, who dat? We screw up our D's and T's and A's and R's, and it's it's more or less a Boston, New Jersey that says y'all, you know? So it's kind of a screwy accent, so I hope your guests can understand me. So, Ralph, how do you... I, I've been to the studio. It's amazing, well, thanks. The, the operation. I'm, you know, I'm going to dive into a, to a real deep question. Um, how does it feel to um, support people in a, in, a, in a business? I mean, they're dependent on your product. They're, de they're, they're dependent on your jobs there. You've been doing that for a long time. How, how does that translate? Tell us how that feels. 
Um, most people will never have this feeling. They'll never achieve the level of, I, I like to say progression. They'll never achieve that level of progression that you have. How does that feel? Well, thank you. Um, how does it feel? You know, and, and people don't have to go the same progression. And, you know, it's just that I really enjoy having a team. I, I, I like teams. Um, and I actually have my two son-in-laws as well as my two sons and 18 other employees. So it makes me feel good except every second Thursday when I have to do payroll. But, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's, it's a great feeling. Um, it's fun to share your love of photography because what we do, what, what, what you do out there, is so important every time you push that button it should be the best photo you've ever done you know being in the in the school business whether that's shooting uh team sports or individual little snot-nosed kid on school day you know unfortunately sometimes there's tragedy and the thing that touched me so many years ago is there was a high school student who she was the president of the class and she had an asthma attack and died wow. and the mama grabbed me at the funeral and said you're the only person that has given me my daughter for the rest of my life what we do is important and you have to feel you have to photograph with the passion that that picture might be the last picture that person ever has. So that's a deep responsibility on your part, on my part. But it, it's fun. I, I really don't work that much. Cindy and I travel a whole bunch. I show up and smile and have lunch with the guys, um, go in and talk now and then just to try to you know, motivate and get things uh, rolling on special projects, but um, it, it, it's been great, and I, I'm just so blessed to, um, to be in the position I am. You know, as photographers, we, we go through a lot of ups and downs, emotionally, financially. Um, I remember you telling me a story about Katrina, and it, it, you know, I, to this day, I still remember that story about how you guys were were how you guys actually recovered and a lot of people you know they just don't make it back you know when adversity strikes um what was in your heart at that time like tell me about that. well katrina for a lot of people that don't know katrina was really a man-made problem it, it it wasn't you know the hurricane what it was was you know, a hurricane to New Orleans people used to be a three-day vacation from school where the little old ladies prayed the rosary in the corner and we played Monopoly by candlelight. Um, so Katrina, what happened was the Corps of Engineers dredged too close to a levee and that wall collapsed under. So that's what caused, and then a barge, everybody hears about the Ninth Ward and all of those poor people, uh, a barge got loose and broke down another levee. So that's what really happened with Katrina. But I, there's been many ups and downs. There, there's, you know, but you, you gotta get up. You gotta get up. I mean, we went out and painted our own little signs to say we're alive and well and we can do copy and restoration for you we can help you with your photographs uh we didn't know but uh how long we'd be in business if we'd be back in business but we were bound and determined you know i i, I have a great set of uh sons all of them are sons uh the son-in-laws as well as the sons and you know, a couple of them went in and ran the business, and Ryan and I went and picked up fence pieces and put the yards back together. You know, you just, if, if you love something, you got to continue to do it, and, you know, God always takes care of you. He really does.
that's powerful. That, that is really powerful, Ralph. And, you know, I've read so many different types of st statistics on the failure rate in photography, and I hear a story like yours, and, you know, I often think to myself, uh, is, is it a matter of character? Is it will? Like, how do you pull through? Like, I'm a new photographer. I haven't experienced any, any adversity in my life in terms of, you know, being in business or even being a photographer. Um, if you had to paint a picture for that new photographer uh, in terms of how they could deal with adversity, how would you, what would you tell them? Well, my words to a new photographer would be, don't go directly into business. Go work for somebody. I mean, if you worked for somebody for nothing for six months, you would get more education than a four-year college degree in photography, you know, hands-on, uh, working hard for somebody, understanding what it takes for hard work. Um, education is so important. You know, if somebody said, Ralph, how did you last? 48 years well it's education and unfortunately today we get too much of our education from online you know it's meetings like this meeting the exposure meeting here where you make friends with people you know and when you if you ever go into another city or you have a question about a certain type of job you know that you, you've got to get out and meet people. You got to learn something new every day. Even though I don't work on a daily basis anymore, I'm looking on the internet. I want to see something different. I want to get a new and exciting idea. You know, you just made a very powerful statement in my uh, presentation tomorrow on social media. One of the, the steps that I actually introduce is what I call boots on the ground. Your social media doesn't really exist unless you have a physical network of people that you're connected to. And uh, I'm a firm believer in that, especially now. How do you see social media and photography together? Does it work? Is it necessary? I mean, you've been in, you, you've achieved a level of uh, progression in your business far before social media was even a factor. I mean, do you think it's that big of a factor for a business owner? In business, people like to do business with friends. And you can't be friends over a computer. Not like a face-to-face, -face, real handshake. Be sincere. Make that a great handshake. You know, join your Rotary. Join your Kiwanis. Join... You know, these meetup groups of people in different professions, you know, it's, it's real contacts. I think social media is great, but it's real contacts. You know, if all things are equal, people would rather do business with friends. And if all things are unequal, people would rather do business with friends. You, you, you got to meet people. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about all the great things that you've done because mm -hmm. I think they need to be talked about and acknowledged. Um, when I first started to dive in and, and research not only the studio and, and the things that you accomplished, one of the things that I saw that was very impressive, I, I want to say almost unbelievable, everybody in your studio was certified. Yes. Tell yes. us about that. Okay. First of all, I am a very big PPA believer. Uh, the benefits that PPA, PPA has, education-wise, credential-wise, and that type of thing, it makes more sense to belong than to not belong. It costs more not to belong than it does to belong because there's so many benefits. Now... Yes, and I'm very glad that I have my masters, my craftsmen. You know, only 110 people have fellowship. Yes, I'm glad for all those things. But the credentials of certified professional photography is real important to me. Um, 
I am I am a businessman first. I am in the business of photography, not the photography business. And the difference there is that I sell pictures. I mean, it's nice to take beautiful fine art pictures. And yes, there are some people who make powerful livings in fine art photography, but I make make my living off of John Doe's kid, you know? And if I use the word master, you know, general public associates that with a plumber. Yes. But if I use the word certified, they associate that with a CPA. Nothing against plumbers, but I think it's important for the general public to know that everyone on staff has gone through a written test and a print test to say that the quality of work that they produce is a good saleable product for our clientele. So certification to me is something that everybody should should work for for their business. Now, my master's degree, my craftsman's degree, and all of the other degrees, those are challenges. And I like challenges, you know. And I want to hit a certain challenge and then go, mm, okay, I did that, what's next? So those are great. I firmly believe in them. I think people should enter competitions and get their master's degree. But to me, for business-wise, certification is what's important. So what would you, a lot of people are frightened, obviously, of taking an scared. exam. Um, when, when you think about certification and how you're going to present that to somebody, what's the, what's the easiest thing you could say to them about um, taking on that process? Well, number one, don't be afraid of anything. Don't be scared. Um, you know, you have to, you have to study. You gotta, you gotta push yourself a little bit more. But you know what? PPA has a lot of people that will help you. There are a lot of people that would love to mentor you and make sure that you pass the test and help you with the images. You know, you gotta be able to take a little criticism and sometimes we artists think that, oh, how can they talk about my my photographs? But, you know, that, that's the way you learn. That's the way, I mean, I, I remember first coming out the, um, the service and Hurricane Camille hit the, the Gulf Coast. And the UPI photographer, who uh, to this day is a, a close friend, literally kicked me in the butt and said, move in closer because I was too far away. So it's a case of you got to have, if, if somebody doesn't teach you how to swing a bat, you're going to continually miss the ball. Let's, you know, I love that. I love that response and, and I love that answer. And Ralph, uh, not only have you inspired me to, you know, declare and, 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 go, and take that same journey, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, I live, matter of fact, my most popular uh, podcast on here is Make No Excuses. I mean, it's the most listened to uh, episode on here, and I, I live that. Um, I live my life out in social media because it creates leverage. It, it allows me to, to progress forward. Um, as we as we near the end of this podcast, and I'm, I'm thinking about, like, what question could I ask somebody who's been in this game as long as you have? What could I ask them that would impact people? The, the thought that the, the first thought that comes to mind is uh, why, why, why photography out of you know, you're a, you're a smart guy in college. You could have did anything. I know the military was a big part of the influence, but why photography and, and why is it so important to you? Because as a photographer, you can do something no doctor a lawyer or anyone else can do. You can preserve time. You can record history. 
you know, and to me, that is an awesome responsibility. And, you know, the, the camera has taken me places around the world in whether it's photographing at a presidential inauguration or photographing a, the pet of the week. You know, photography, your photograph is very important to someone and that's a great feeling when they look at that and seeing people tear up and cry at the image that you've made. So it, it's so important. I, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, God decided. I, I, I think he decides everything. And I'm, I'm so glad that he put me on this journey. Well, let me ask you, I want to ask you a sensitive question um, in, in terms of this issue of diversity in photography has um, haunted us. And I've, I've always been that person to not really complain, but do something about it. And, uh, you know, I'm doing my part and reaching out to people and trying to get us educated as, as people of color. Um, you're a big champion of diversity. And uh, when I first met you and we talked about this, it was almost unbelievable because I had been in photography for so long and um, I never really felt a part of it. And, and I'm, I'm being totally transparent. I never felt a part of it until I met you and you really gave me and Sean Lee that hope that, you know what, you guys can do this. Um, where is that coming from? Where, where did that, where did that drive? Where did that, hey, you have to do this, Keith. Uh, Sean, you have, where did that come from? That really came from upbringing, you know, uh, as we would say, home training, you know, that everybody deserves the right for education. And if there are, if there is a problem, whether it's political, whether it's photography, whether it's a relationship, it's usually education that, that somebody doesn't know that other person, you know? And I just felt, and excuse me, but I just felt that the organization that I loved, PPA, was really too lily white. And, you know, when I got on the board of directors and I gave up my time to be on the board of directors and to volunteer, I wanted to make a difference. And I saw where some of my friends didn't have the opportunities that I had. And it's a comfort thing. And I, I really... I thank mama for where it came from. You know, it's just that people are people and you gotta make people comfortable and you gotta educate everyone. You know, there was a, when I was in college, I was a, a communication major and um, I studied organizational communication behavior. And one of the things that was drilled into us is hundred year old organizations don't change and when you start to implement change you get ready to, to dig in for years because that's unless you fire everybody that's the only way it's going to happen um ppa is a hundred years old or more than more than and um you know my my love for ppa came from an event and we were in atlanta and one of the board members came up to me and I vo had voiced some frustration about the magazine and the lack of diversity in it. And he listened intently and made no excuse and um, agreed with me, which really shocked me and said, I totally agree with you. But the question I want to pose to you is what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And, you know, I, it, it really caught me off guard. And then when, um, when I met you, um, everything that he said just echoed. And I want you guys to know, and I want PPA to know that I really appreciate that. And 
um, when I'm tired, when I'm frustrated, you know, when I'm caught up in my own world, you know, I always think about that conversation. And, you know, it puts me right back on track with the mission. And, Ralph, I want to thank you for that because um, the leverage that you guys put on us in, in this conference and the way it's supposed to be run is very important because it never lets us forget, you know, what, we, what we're supposed to be doing. So I, I want to tell you I appreciate that. Um, you're, you and Cindy, you know, I appreciate you guys. Cindy Romaguerra, that's uh, Ra Ralph's wife. Uh, I, I really appreciate you guys. You, you, you've done more for us in this short amount of time than you really know. And uh, I think our, our listeners need to know that having a mentor, people that care about you, people that are, that are not going to let you off the hook, I think is one of the most important elements you need in photography. Who would that person be for you? Wow. I, I again, feel very fortunate that I came up when I did and there were some great photographers unfortunately most of them are gone to the big dark room in the sky um but there were people like donald jack and you know frank criccio and leon kenema and you know the zeltzmans and monty zucker and dean collins uh who died way too early but um you know, back to your statement, you can't change anything until you're on the inside. And there were some things that frustrated me in PPA years ago, and I'm going, you know what? You either quit or you get involved. And there's no, no success and excuses, and you get involved and you change things. You know, you do it a little at a time, but PPA is a great organization. Um, we have a great executive director in David Trust, in our CFO in Scott Kirkian. I mean, they've made it from almost bankrupt to where they have millions in the bank that I don't know how long it's been, but I think it's well over 10 years that they've even raised dues. You know, so PPA is alive and well. And they have open arms, but it's going to take you, the listener, your involvement, getting involved, whether it's as a volunteer or on a committee, uh, to make that change. That's perfect. And, you know, I, I'm glad you said that because it, people hear me say it. And it's like, well, you know, Keith is saying that it's working for him. But I believe that PPA work can work for anyone. I mean, the, the resources are unbelievable. Um, I mean, just just on the surface. I mean, and there's there's a lot to it, and we're, we're not going to get into it on this particular podcast. But um, Ralph, I want to thank you. you, guys. We are at Exposure One Hundred and One Detroit, two thousand seventeen, and um, our speaking lineup is insane. We are presenting Ralph Romaguerra with the Legends Award, and um, this award is very special. The achievement level for something like this is um, it's far reaching and when I look at being able to present someone with an award like this, um, the qualifications, the, gu the guidelines for it, they're not written, they're established. These people have set the guidelines themselves. So. Um, we're talking with longtime photographer. He is, I know Ralph is humble, but I'm going to say he is one of the biggest photographers in Louisiana. There's nobody bigger. His operation employs 18, 18 people. Besides 18, the four boys. Just besides the four boys. Um, if you are in business, in, in real business, you have to understand that responsibility is tremendous because people are depending on you for their livelihood their health insurance and that's what I want people to understand about what it is to be in business it's not, it's one thing to hang your hat and say I'm a business person um, and it's another thing to support a community so um, Ralph would you say that that was pretty uh, pretty accurate yeah and I really appreciate everything you do for the community you know no one no one gives the time and effort uh, that you do to the bomb squad and, and, and periscoping all the time that, that's just awesome and I'm sure that the community is very thankful to you thank you Ralph 
Okay, you guys, this concludes another Kilo Bravo Delta podcast. Podcast.keithbdixon.online. It's official. Ralph Romaguera, New Orleans photographer extraordinaire. Um, you guys, I will see you next week. Thank you for listening. And again, I appreciate you. Hasta luego.